6,675 pounds, the Octane 273 by Jayco here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This is really kind of like the ceiling limit of where you want to be. If you've got like a half ton, maybe a side-by-side, -side, a couple motorcycles, this is, because of the body size, the total weight of it, this is really the top limit of where you want a half ton to be. And the good news is, you don't really feel like you settled for anything. A recurring trend, really, and kind of just the whole theme of the Octane series by Jayco is higher-end features a little bit closer to an entry-level price. For instance, we have a full one-piece retractable roll-down screen wall. It costs a little bit more than the roll-down tent kind of walls, but it is so, so much nicer to operate. As a person who has manipulated hundreds of these things in my career, I can tell you that this right here, this is my preference on a rear screen 10 times out of 10. I mean, I'll take anything over nothing, but if I had a chance, this is the one I'd go with. And with a little flippier toe, you can get that little screen wall up out of the way. That handy retract action kicks in. We can take a look at what we have going on back here. This is a, uh, just like a fifth wheel toy hauler, we have a Happy Jack power sofa and like um, queen bed above lift system here. When you are in this class and price point, you will sometimes find this. You will also sometimes find a lesser expensive method where the sofas basically just fold up against the wall. They're not mounted in a power lift system. Now these sofas can go down the road horizontally or you can flip them so that they ride vertically against the wall to give you either maximum loading width or height. And you will note that up here on the power drop queen bed, Jayco has gone with a newer system where it does not rely on those conventional silvery push pins to drop this. Instead, what you have down here is a handy new system where if you want the bed to drop, you go like that and lift the sofa up with the power ramp button. Or if you want the sofas to drop without the queen bed, you just go like that. It's one less loose object you have to worry about potentially losing. It's just simple, easier, smarter. So you've got dual rollover sofas, which can convert into a giant lower sleeping space. And you have a matching bed equally sized above. And that's what's kind of cool about toy haulers. They make excellent alternative bunkhouses. What if you've got a bunch of bikes? What if you have a bunch of kayaks? What if a hundred other things? What if you just don't like traditional bunkhouses? Or what if every now and then you have guests who aren't kids? You have adults. These are adult sized sleepers. And this thing can perform so many different functions and do so seamlessly, flawlessly. You know, you don't have to like rebuild or reset your RV. When you're done with it, you just flip this thing up out of the way. And you notice we got that little, almost like the back seat of a pickup truck, kind of fold down console armrest. A couple little cup holders in it so you don't have to get up and down with your drink or to get a drink all the time. Or you could flip it up out of the way and have a six adult seating capacity. Plus, you might note behind it we have blackout snap-on window shades. Those are nice because they give you all kinds of privacy, especially if you're sleeping back here. But uh, they keep the sun out of the RV very nice if you're boondocking and don't have AC function. They also just simply are lightweight and they get out of the way and your handlebars won't catch them. A very underappreciated feature of this floor plan, I think, is the sheer number of lights that we have in it. Like you notice over here, around the bunks, we have all kinds of lights. Now, another neat thing is right here in the hallway. You have a dedicated hallway light switch, which is separate from the remainder of your, your main cabin lighting over here. They give you more lights per square foot than anybody else in this class and category. And I think that's a really, really clutch feature. You might notice how that bed is kind of bumped up. That's because that uh, big table that I mentioned is shoved under there currently. It's a perfect place for it to ride down the road. So you get there, you get unloaded, you got to be able to spend some time living in this thing. And one of the cool parts about a toy hauler is being extra wide and extra tall you get more cabinet and living space than you would normally get from a non-wide body, uh, similar size trailer, similar length as it were. Now, this is really, once we get past, I guess you call it the, oh gosh, holy cow, major feature I should have talked about way, way sooner. It's a toy hauler. How much space do I have to load stuff? From the back of this dovetail to right below that refrigerator is 12 feet. 
you have eight feet three inches to the edge of that kitchen cabinet. I should have talked about that immediately. We also have these, this is the same thing they use in Talon and Seismic Fifth Wheels, these heavy duty recessed D-rings right here. And you notice that they have them all the way up to that fridge, multiple sets of them, so that you're not fighting for tie down space with somebody else. Can't believe I didn't talk about that sooner. But one of the things that's going on now with the Noctane compared to the history of them, to me it's always felt like a J Flight toy hauler, and now it pretty much literally is a J Flight toy hauler. These are now built within the J Flight facility. So this is effectively an extended member of the single best-selling series of travel trailers on planet Earth since the year 2005 and counting. What that means is that uh, we're, we're homogenizing a, uh, a very popular set of features here, like this beautiful pocket-screwed cabinetry, and I like how it's got it almost looks like a nice sheen to it without looking waxy and plasticky. Hardwood cabinet doors. Um, that is a Bluetooth DVD player up in that corner, by the way. You can mount a TV above that fridge. And that is an 8 cubic foot gas electric travel and friendly refrigerator freezer. Our kitchen area over here is deceptively well equipped. It's easy to miss. Like you got easy reach power outlets. And you might notice how we got outlets near our sofas or beds, depending on what we're doing back here. We also have some cool things we got little under counter accent lighting. It just looks neat during the day, but it also helps you navigate this thing at night if you wake up and need to sneak back here. USB plugs to keep some phones topped off. That is a convection microwave down there in place of the oven, which is something I think personally more RVs should do. I know some people bake in the traditional ovens. I know that a lot of people don't though, and I think that almost everybody will use that thing. It cooks faster and introduces less heat into the RV. We've got a real tile splash. We've got a uh, sealed edge counter system here. And we've also got the same sink treatments here that we have in a big fifth wheel like a North Point, a Pinnacle, an Eagle. You've got these, uh, this uh, bamboo. Wow, that is fitted right in there. Holy cow, that is not falling out in transit. Jeez, oh, Pete's. Um, point is, though, you've got this fitted bamboo cutting board sink cover over top of stainless sinks. And this is one of those things you start to see the difference in the Octane versus Brand X. This is a little bit more expensive than other things. Like, Octanes run a little more money than something like the Wolf Packs that we have here at Halid RV. This is a very similar floor plan to what we call a 24-pack 14-plus Wolf Pack. And they each do things the other does not. Overall, the Octane comes in a little bit more money, but it's because you're getting a couple more little things like uh, some of the stuff I've shown you here. Now, moving up, like a lot of extra light. Lights are very expensive. Lights are one of the most expensive parts of RV construction, amazingly enough. The bathroom is awesome. Because this thing is super duper tall, like I'm 6'3", I can barely touch that ceiling panel with my fingertips. You've got all the headroom in the world in that shower. We've got an extra deep, large vanity here. And notice we have a dual entry door so that if you're a guest or a kid sleeping on the beds in the back, or if you're from the master bedroom up front, you're good to go. And look at the upgraded hardware here in the bathroom. This is beautiful. We've got the sealed edge counters with stainless recessed sink even here in the bathroom. Big standing corner shower so that you don't have to, uh, you know, duck in there. And dedicated linen space in the bathroom is yet another great feature they have here. But it's Jayco doing Jayco things. They only know how to do a little more than everybody else. That's It's their best and their worst quality. Like, when you compare a Jayco to almost anybody else, they're almost always a little more expensive because they added that extra cabinet, extra lights, extra window. It also means they're a little more expensive than everybody else because they have extra cabinet, extra light, extra window. You get the idea. Now, again, we're extra tall even here in the bedroom, which means we have a huge overhead cabinet, but it's not a head knocker. And I love how they really dressed up this bedroom nicely. They took some notes from their big brother fifth wheel toy haulers and incorporated them here into their travel trailer segment. The bed is easy lift on a plywood deck with gas struts to get uh, under there, making that simple and easy. I like how our windows are fully trimmed out so that those uh, pleated nightshades, which first of all, they're pleated shades. They're not metal mini blinds up here in the bedroom, which a lot of brands will drop down to. And we have huge wide open side stands with uh, a dual outlet set on this side. So whether it's phone charging, CPAP and heated blanketing or whatever, you're good to go. One of the first things to talk about on any Jayco, which is, you know, I should have talked about it sooner since it's one of the first things I should have talked about, is their warranty. Jayco has a best-in-class warranty. They've had 
double the full RV coverage of a lot of brands for a lot of years. A two year warranty versus a one year RV warranty. Where it got murky is brands started putting this big three on the window and wanting you to think they had a three year warranty. They don't. That's three year structural coverage. I know that because we carry a lot of those brands and that's fine. The structural coverage is fine. It's a good thing. It makes me feel good. But the fact is Jayco had more coverage on more components for longer. Well, to clear up that muddy water, they said, fine, you know what? For all 2020 models and moving forward, we're gonna have a two plus three warranty. We'll have the same two year warranty we've always had and we'll do that three year structural thing in addition that everyone else is doing. So there's no more question as to who's got the better warranty going on here. I think that's pretty darn impressive. No one else has ever done that before. Big thing to talk about out here is the fact that this is a 102 inch wide body. It's eight and a half foot wide. That is max legal width before you have to start flagging stuff as a wide load. There's a lot of, well, there's plenty of no longer uh, wide body, just standard body, what I call crossover toy hauler campers out there. And they're cool, they're lighter weight, they're less money, they're smaller body, and there's benefits to all of those things. But if you have bigger toys, bigger needs, bigger taste, you need to get something a little larger. That's exactly where this comes in, and Jake will give you every ounce of space they possibly could, even up here on the tongue. Um, you know, power awning, power tongue jack, that stuff's kind of a dime a dozen. What I do like here, though, is that they took the batteries off the tongue. The batteries are actually mounted in the side of this thing. So you have this nice big wide open area up here, whether it's for cargo, we do want to put a little uh, utility box up there. If you want to put a small generator on there for off grid uh, functionality, you can do all that right here. Now, as we work our way down the sidewall, a couple things. We do have a full outside utility shower and black tank flush, which is nice. Toy haulers have very limited outside storage so one of the things I think is smart is how they give us a dedicated sewer hose storage area in here it's a great idea that keeps something from mixing in with our freshwater storage stuff we do apply a heated enclosed underbelly package to our octanes here whenever possible so that it, you know you do have whatever maximum available protection we like to put them on these things You've got a best-in-class Goodyear tire package here. These Goodyear Endurance radials are rated for up to 87 miles an hour. At most, they need 80 PSI. And the reason I mention that, because most people are not tire technical experts, I'm certainly not. I know just enough to get myself in trouble. What I do know, though, is like if you went to the gas station next door or on your next trip, if you need to put air in your tires, most, uh, like, say, like, uh, residential grade or like passenger grade uh, air pumps for tires can't go above 80 PSI. So you can stop pretty much anywhere and put air in the tires of these things. You might notice that always on side mount ladder to get you up to that Jayco Magnum Truss roof system there. So that uh, it carries the highest load rating of any roof in its class by the way. If you live in an area that has a, a lot of snow coverage like we do, and some areas certainly have much, much more than we do in Michigan, um, you'll appreciate the extra strength of that roof system there. Now. You notice the, we've added the optional ramp patio package to this. I like to call it the patio party deck because I think it's where everyone's going to end up hanging out just because it's fun and it's cool. But what's nice is, again, Jayco doing Jayco things. Costs a little bit more, but they actually include some steps on the back. And very few travel trailer toy haulers at this class segment price point include a feature like that. Something else. You might notice on either side of the backup camera prep, they have a really aggressive uh, LED lighting package. And what that ties into is the J Smart lighting system. That's a thing that Jayco came up with. It stands for signals, markers, and reverse travel. When you shift into reverse, those big old lights are gonna flare up so that you can see behind you, or people can see that you're backing up with this trailer and maybe your visibility isn't the best. It just keeps everybody safer also on safety. Let's say you flip on your right turn signal. Of course that right tail light's gonna blink, but on a Jayco, all associated side clearance and marker lights will also blink so that once again, other people have a clue of what you're trying to do as you wheel this 60, 700 pound trailer plus whatever weight you have inside of it. I think that's a pretty cool thing they're doing and it's really just kind of surprising that more brands don't do it. But again, that's Jayco doing a little bit more, cost a little bit more, but you get a little bit more. And a few other fun things on the back here before we check out the awning. I want to point out a couple real smart things, how the fact that they have their taillights mounted up higher on these, which makes them more visible for the driver behind you, which means they're less likely to smash into the back of your beautiful bluebird right here. Now, on the tailgate, 
they're using nicer lock systems here. And what's cool is it actually can key lock. And with their one key system, the key that it locks this, locks your baggage doors, locks your main door, locks your pass-through. Again, one key does all that. And these, this is called a positive latch system. It fights itself so that it doesn't uh, like pop open. Even if you don't lock the thing, to get that thing to jiggle bang open in transit, not exactly easy. Now, uh, over here, we've got a large patio awning. And that is something that they've done very well here on what sometimes is referred to i just i don't know if i refer to this as entry level anymore i think this is beyond that i think this is a solid like instead of trim package you got l s l t l x i think this is really solidly in that mid-level trim package and getting the job done well big power awning big led light system here and against that white sidewall which will help keep the rv cooler in that hot desert sun by the way or in the dunes you'll be good outside power hookups here very handy if you need to do some wrenching on one of your toys and you got to run some tools and how about best in class goodyear tires uh these are the only american source tire used in the entirety of the towable rv business you see the nice looking aluminum wheels they're nitro filled for what that's worth i think most brands well not most but a lot of brands seem to be doing that now but those things are a best in class feature rated for up to 87 miles per hour and only need to be filled to the uh, maximum of 80 psi meaning you can stop at a gas station and top off the tire pressure if need be and that's all part of what goes into that double length warranty on those jacos now up front here we've got a great pass-through compartment which is something a lot of toy haulers sorely lack and note that it is a true pass-through but you've got extra tote space over here on the left area as well so i mean you've got <laughs> you got it all going on here guys we got the wider body we got the taller ceiling it makes it more side by side friendly half ton towability i mean <laughs> double the warranty there's all kinds of good best in class standout features happening here and if you like what you see and if you like what you hear give us a call and if you don't like what you hear uh hit the mute button and give us a call anyway please <laughs> so take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone